26 consecutive season, the folks in Lincoln, Nebraska, either sit around their television or come to Memorial Stadium as a tradition because the day after Thanksgiving belongs to Husker Red, and today is no different. As one of their rivals comes into town, the Iowa Hawkeyes, which have an unblemished record at 11-0, a number four ranking next to their name as they come into Memorial Stadium trying to avoid the upset. Iowa with an eye towards the college football playoff and a date of the Big Ten championship game next week. The Big Ten West champs try to avoid the upset against the Huskers today. Weather is a factor. Both coaches talked about it. Obviously, Iowa played in bad home field conditions last week at Kinnick with that eight-inch snowfall overnight. But they were able to deal with that in their win against Purdue. Ends up being a 17-yard punch, setting him up at the 47-yard line. And Tommy Armstrong, Jr. Zipping one into an Iowa Hawkeye. Another interception for the Hawkeyes leading the Big Ten, and this time it's Cole Fisher. That being said, here's the snap. And Beffert, throwback screen. This is Henry Krieger. Cole picking up all that yardage and more. All the way down to the 10-yard line, first and goal for the Hawkeyes. And they're going to roll out Beathard. He's got an open man, George Kittle. Touchdown Hawkeyes in Iowa in front. So Sam Foltz will kick to Desmond King, who again was suspended for the first quarter due to team violation. And King muffs the football. It's loose, and the Huskers have it. Nick Stoltenberg. You cannot advance a muff of a punt, so it will be taken over near the 31-yard line by Nebraska. But the Huskers will take over. The redshirt freshman out of Gretna, Mick Stoltenberg, Johnny on the spot to scoop it. Make the reverse to Moore. Check it down for Carter. First down. And Seathan Carter pushing the pile inside the 10-yard line. First and goal, Nebraska. motion minutia before the before the ball was thrown and then Seathan Carter leaks out at the right time. There's been a notable increase in targeting Seathan Carter and you can see it right there. Kirk Ferrin is very upset a late flag was thrown as well after the play. Snodgrass to clear the sideline warning the side judge just threw his flag as well. That's a second sideline warning or is that a 15? Unsportsmanlike conduct is assessed against the Iowa sideline. Has to just do the goal. First down. It's a give to cross. And a mighty cross as a Nebraska touchdown. takes advantage of that muffed punt by Desmond King. And Drew Brown ties the game at seven. Iowa's defense been a little leaky the last three games or so. They bring pressure, safety pressure. It's tipped into the air and picked off. And Parker Hesse bangs it in for a touchdown. Iowa brought safety pressure that time, forcing Armstrong into a much quicker throw than he wanted. Yeah, the safety was Miles Taylor, number 19, comes right up the middle and very good timing on the pressure. And Parker Hesse tips the ball to himself. What a huge play, but the second 
Interception by Armstrong. This time leads directly to a score. Hoping that is settled down in the second half, but the win's still howling, guys. Yeah, Beathard is going with the win right now as Kanziri gets a block from Pemba and has open space. Touchdown, Iowa. Jordan Kanziri into the end zone. Back-to-back -back weeks with a touchdown in his third game back from the ankle injury, and now Iowa has taken a two-score lead. Cross, seeking space, and Cross surges in. Touchdown, Huskers. Offensive drive of the game for the Huskers, marching 75 yards down the field. And it was a pass game first to open up the run game. It's really reverse of what Nebraska and Iowa, quite frankly, typically want to do. Very good block by the fullback, Andy Janovich, in the two running back run game. And then Cross finishes tough up inside. And Brown makes it a four-point game. Nebraska came back from 17 down a year ago. Iowa fans are well aware what this Nebraska team can do in this type of ball game. Cross with his second score, and it's a four-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Nearly disastrous play. From the 32, it's where Iowa starts with the lead. Here is Kanziri with a big hole. There goes Jordan Kanziri, and the New York native is going to burst one open for an Iowa rushing touchdown. Sixty-eight yards for Kanziri. Iowa responds in a big way. Exactly the same play, same design as Kanziri just scored on the touchdown before. Lead with Adam Cox, the fullback, out on the edge. To get off the field after he made that great catch. From shot position, Armstrong on play action. Looking for Warren double coverage. Based on where the line judge came out, it's going to be a yard short. And now it's fourth down and one with seven minutes to go. A field goal makes it a one-score game here. Absolutely no push up front. And I thought a quarterback sneak actually to the left side. There's a bubble in the under defense that Iowa runs in their front. And there was softness to the left on a quarterback sneak. Armstrong in the shotgun on fourth and one as the Hawkeyes load the line. They're going to go for it here. Armstrong to the end zone for Riley, and it's incomplete. Greg Maven in coverage, and it's a turnover on downs. John, thanks very much. Armstrong on first down, throws an interception, and it's Josie Jewell. Second career interception for Jewell, and that might just be enough to put this game away with 4.14 to play. Fourth pick for Tommy Armstrong. Two plays to keep this drive alive for the Huskers with a minute 26 left. The spy coverage on Armstrong here. And Westerkamp was the closest man to it, but didn't really look like he was throwing to Westerkamp in the route. Now it's fourth down at 10. Now Nebraska seems to be content with going for the field goal right here. You got to make it a two-score or a one-score game in Absolutely. one way or another. So this would make it an eight-point one-score game. Brown has been fantastic, especially in the second half of the year. He's made each of his last nine field goals. Eight of them have been from 40 yards or more. This is 42 with the win. And the Huskers are not done yet. Makes it a one-score game, and now it's up to the onside kick. And here is the onside kick, and it is grabbed by the tight end, Henry Krieger Koval, and the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to go to 12-0. A 12-win season for the first time in program history with a date in the Big Ten championship game and essentially a play-in for the college football playoff. 
They like the football, the value of it. They don't make a lot of mistakes as far as putting the ball in harm's way. What they do travels really well and will match up really well against whoever they play. Iowa's going to win this game, Kelly, without converting a third down. Oh, for eight on the day. You can get away with things like that, Adam, if you do so many of the other things well. They were so good on first down. They were plus three in the turnover takeaway today, and that's how they win games. Yes. They live in explosives. They're efficient. They win the turnover takeaway battle. All of those things. You can afford to have hiccups on third down once in a while. They converted 47% of the time coming into today. And they just won this game simply in other ways. One more will do it. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are off to the Big Ten Championship game with an unblemished record. Call it what you want, but it is a play-in game for the Hawkeyes in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium next week. They win, you got to put them into the college football playoff. What a run by the Iowa Hawkeyes in the first meeting in Big Ten play between Kirk Ferentz and Mike Riley. And the Heroes Trophy belongs to Iowa in the fifth meeting as Big Ten foes. Kirk Ferentz, his team's 12-0, and he is with Olivia Harlan. The first undefeated regular season in Hawkeye history. Coach, I know how much you like this team. What makes them different? Yeah, you know, they play hard. That's... Uh... I said, oh, I don't know how good we are, but they play hard. They play together. It's just a lot of fun to be with every day. I've got to ask now that it's come. Are you surprised? Uh, you know, I don't know. Surprise is the right word. We've uh, looked at it one week at a time. And we just try to, you know, prepare and uh, play our best on Saturday. And this is a uh, Friday game, obviously. But these guys have handled it week by week. And, uh, you know, you start stacking them up, good things happen. Week by week, you're not done yet. Big Ten championship coming up with three potential candidates. How do you keep the momentum going? Well, I don't know. We want to enjoy this one. They, you know, the one nice thing about playing Friday, they got all day to, uh, tonight and they got all day tomorrow. Sunday, we'll figure out what we're going to do the next week. But uh, these guys have really worked hard. They, they uh, certainly deserve to, to enjoy this a little bit. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Thanks, Olivia. Thank you. Michigan State, Michigan, or Ohio State. If the Spartans beat Penn State tomorrow, they'll play the Hawkeyes in the Big Ten title game. If Michigan State loses their game, whoever wins the earlier matchup between Ohio State and Michigan will move on to the Big Ten championship game. That's all from Lincoln, Nebraska. The Hawkeyes are undefeated 12-0 on their way to Indianapolis with a potential shot at the college football playoff. Final score 28 to 20. Reminder that tomorrow, the game, Ohio State, Michigan, noon Eastern on ABC. For Kelly Stauffer, Olivia Harlan, our amazing, wonderful crew, Adam Amin, thanks so much.